Hello everyone, I'm so excited. There's a new kid on the block. Today we're taking you to a Chinese restaurant that's been open for just a few months. They have wonderfully unique, flavorful food. Though this place has been open only a short time, it's already earned 188 Yelp reviews, and 179 of those are five-star reviews, which is why they come up as one of the highest rated restaurants on Yelp. While I like to read Yelps, I don't usually give Yelp much credence, but this is definitely one time Yelpers got it right. The food here is fresh, vibrant, and what I like to call clean, meaning that it's pure, unmuddled. They know what they're trying to achieve, and there's nothing else going on to confuse the palate. In addition, one can discern the impeccable quality in every bite. Our Chinatown's one of the best anywhere, and it's been expanding geographically each year. I haven't been able to find actual street boundaries for our Chinatown, so some may feel that today's restaurant, Lucky Noodle, isn't in Chinatown proper. But despite being a bit farther from the strip than many of the traditional Chinatown restaurants, it is well worth the trip. Lucky Noodle has all the feel of a mom and pop hole in the wall kind of place. But don't be fooled, we spoke with Chef Rick, and he's been around the block with over 30 years experience in noodle making in Taiwan. And he's offering a special deal for our viewers. So stay tuned to the end to find out all the details. We started off the meal with a refreshing glass of Taiwanese sour plum juice. It's very sweet and sour with a wonderful salty taste. Because of the plums being smoked, they take on a salty aspect that's sensational. I really love this drink. This is comfort food at its finest. Soothing, warm, and made with love. A complex mixture of finely chopped pork and fermented tofu that's seasoned to perfection and served over Chef Rick's superb homemade noodles. You can tell right away that these noodles are different than any others you'll ever taste. They remind me of the ones my Italian Nona made for her soups. Much more delicate, rough around the edges than most tougher noodles one will find in most noodle houses. Almost a, a knife cut texture, and not as uniformly smooth as pulled noodles we usually find in Vegas. The scallions offer a subtle element and a nice texture to the dish. The final surprise here is a fresh sliced cucumber. Where the scallions were subtle, the cucumbers are anything but. At first, I didn't know what to make of this, but when eaten together with the rest of the dish, it was pure magic. This is a standout dish in both texture and flavor. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The spring rolls are light and delicate. The wrapper is crispy and layered with multiple flaky tears that break off and dissolve in your mouth. The filling is a mixture of cabbage and Chinese vegetables that are well balanced. I taste a little sesame oil and garlic chive they give it a significant pop of flavor. These are true spring rolls, the American cousin of the egg roll. Many people aren't aware of the difference, but real egg rolls in China and Taiwan are made with a thicker wrapper that's dense and almost bubbly in texture. Spring rolls were developed here in America by Asians who tailored them to be more pleasing to the American palate. Therefore, these are appropriately named. I love the sweet and sour sauce as well. It's in keeping with Chef Rick's talent for balancing spices and pushing flavors to the limits. It's the perfect ratio of sugar to vinegar and just out of this world. Another home run in the flavor department. It's a sign of a masterful chef when they're able to blend unique spices in a way that leaves us scratching our head and racking our brain to figure out what's going on. In this dish, the unusual background notes that give this marinated pork its remarkable unique flavor are completely baffling. I had to ask Chef Rick what spices give this pork its wonderful flavor. Is it cinnamon or five spice, I asked. His answer left me really confused. <laughs> he said it was just Taiwanese white pepper spice. I guess it's more helpful than if he'd said an ancient Chinese secret, but I'm sure he's holding on to some sort of longtime family secret recipe that gives this dish its unique taste and exquisite flavor. The pork's so tender it melts in your mouth, but the outside is also crunchy and delicate. It crumbles as you bite into it. I love the fermented radish bits. They add a vibrant flavor to the whole dish as they playfully mix with the rice and broccoli to make a well-rounded and cohesive treat to eat. This is a must-try dish. Our server recommended it due to its popularity. It's not hard to see how it's become so. Every culture has their own form of dumpling. The Jewish people make kreplok. The Poles have pierogies. Italians, ravioli. But nothing compares to the explosion of variations the Chinese have invented around the simple dumpling. They have every type of variety of stuffing and countless variations of skins to fill. These are perhaps the most popular, 
pork and cabbage, and they're nothing short of spectacular. Again, Chef Rick's 30 plus years of experience is shown off in these simple yet perfect dumplings. The sauce is soy based with hints of Chinese vinegar and other flavor notes that are hard to detect, but very pleasing to the palate. I thoroughly enjoyed these. This is the Taiwanese fried chicken. Sadly, one might overlook this dish as it's unlikely to win a beauty contest. However, that would be a huge mistake. It's an amazing dish. It's so delicious that it's a must try. They tell me this is the most popular dish they serve, and after one bite, I can see why. The chicken is moist and juicy, and the taste is just sensational. Not your ordinary salt and pepper fried chicken. It's to die for. There's so much going on here, and it's very unusual. There was this place my family loved when I was a kid called The Paddock. They were famous for their fried chicken, and my mother and I would sit and eat it and try to figure out the secret ingredient that made it so good. It's the same unusual flavor profile this wonderful chicken has. It seems like maybe a combination of Chinese five spice and cinnamon. I know these spices might be hard to imagine being part of a recipe for fried chicken, but you can just forget all that. Sit down, relax, and let this dish just wash over your senses. It's wildly addicting. And even though I wanted to save room for other dishes, I couldn't stop eating it. I'm already planning my next trip here to get some more. I wish my mom were here to taste this chicken. She would absolutely have loved it. Crab Rangoon is a dish made of crispy wontons filled with cream cheese and crab. Though popular in many Chinese restaurants, it's actually an American-born dish invented by Chef Joe Young while working under Victor Bergeron, whose nickname was Vic. He was the founder of the famous Trader Vic's, first made in 1952 at a Hawaiian-style Hollywood party and called Rangoon Crab a la Jack. It later appeared on the menu in 1955 at the famous Polynesian-themed restaurant Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. Oddly enough, cream cheese is not something you often see in Asian cuisine, However, this appetizer is so universally loved that it's a popular mainstay on many Chinese restaurants in the United States, as well as in Asia. This crab rangoon is spectacular. I spent much of my childhood going to Trader Vic's with my parents, and I think this rendition of this classic would make Joe and Vic beg for the recipe. The sauce is so wonderful, sweet and sour and perfect for dipping with these delicious little treats. Truly a special dish and not to be missed. Okay, time to come up for air and try this wonderful drink. Hand-fried Taiwanese brown sugar and milk come together with fresh glutinous boba. Such a beautiful drink. Kind of reminded me of the storms of Jupiter. That's as addicting as it is pleasing to the palate. I absolutely love this drink. It's like a milk tea or coffee, and you have to try it. I also love the attention to detail that they take in labeling everything here. It shows how they're obsessed with quality and have such an attention to detail. This is also a good time to discuss the kitchen. <laughs> Look at this place, it's immaculate. As a former restaurant owner, it warms my heart to see this. I also love this layout where the entire kitchen is on full display to the guests. This is the Lucky Beef Noodle Soup. Wow, very delicious. I hope you order it when you come here. Noodles are thought to have first been made in the Eastern Han period, usually from unleavened millet flour. Archaeologists reported discovering earthenware bowls that contained the mixture used to make noodles. Since then, noodles have exploded in popularity, and there are versions of them made in almost every culture in every country all over the world. I'm almost always disappointed when I go to a faux restaurant or noodle house and order the soup because the broth is almost always bland and boring. It seems these days that most chefs have a fear of going too far with the seasoning. As usual, I asked for the salt before the dish even arrived as I'm so used to having to fix these noodle soups. But this was a waste of time at Lucky Noodle. It required no additional seasoning on my part. It was fantastic as is. One of the best I've ever tasted. It puts most Jewish mother's chicken soup to shame. So much depth of flavor, clearly homemade noodles, and the texture is wonderful. This is the farthest thing from bland. It's a very rich, hearty chicken broth with delicious, perfectly tender chunks of beef. It's another winning dish. Sweet and sour chicken is probably one of the most famous and popular of all dishes served in Chinese restaurants in almost every country all over the world. It's also most kids' first favorite go-to dish because it's so approachable and sugary sweet. 
Despite this universal popularity for hundreds of years, its origin is unclear. One thing we know is that the combination of sugar and vinegar is highly addicting. They're so vibrant and fresh in all the food here, and this sweet and sour chicken is no exception. It's very light, not at all greasy. We asked for the sauce on the side so that we could explore the chicken in its unadulterated form. And also because once you add the sauce, it can become a little bit soggy. The quality of chicken they use here is unmistakable. And the batter is ultra light and airy. It has a beautiful crunch when you bite into it. Most of the sweet and sour chicken you get in Chinese restaurants use pineapple that comes from a can. Here, it's been freshly cut. It raises this dish to a higher level. The word chow mein simply means stir-fried noodles. Its early popularity can be traced back to the 1849 California Gold Rush, when Chinese immigrants brought their love of noodles and their chow mein recipes over with them. Americans fell in love with it, and thus our torrid love affair with chow mein still holds strong today. Rick's beef chow mein has the same rich umami flavor as all of his recipes. Just one bite, it's easy to see why this dish gained such attention and popularity. The noodles are al dente, and the sauce is a cornucopia of spices and flavors all rolled into one. There's so much going on in here in the flavor department. I'm loving the bright, clean flavor of the chopped cabbage, green onions, and carrots. The word of the day here is still fresh. I love the beef in the chow mein. It's not your usual Chinese-style beef. It's a little more toothsome, not velveted or tenderized. You can really taste how it imparts its earthy flavor into the noodles. I also love their chili oil. It's nothing short of spectacular and goes so well on this wonderful dish. Looks like another home run. Well, I know so far this review has been one excellent dish after another, but incredibly, despite all that high level competition, this dumpling and red chili sauce is our dish of the day. Destined for our best of the best list we've been compiling. The homemade skins of these cabbage and pork dumplings is very similar to the dough of Rick's homemade noodles, and they're exquisite. We both thought this was perhaps one of the best spicy wontons we've had anywhere. The wontons are ecstasy, the twosome skin that gives you just enough of a fight. It demands your attention. The sauce is one I make at home all the time. Soy sauce, chili oil, and Chinese vinegar. But of course, Chef Rick has elevated it to a higher level with some of his magic ingredients. Topped with green onions and sesame seeds, it's a delight that can't be missed. The sauce is so flavorful, I wanted to pick up the bowl and drink from it. However, not wanting to make a spectacle, I poured all of the remaining sauce into a spoon and drank it down. It's totally delicious. Finally, a dessert item. These are reminiscent of the Italian zeppoli my Nona would have made every Sunday. All the family would wait around for the dough to rise before she'd put them into the fryer and then roll them in granulated sugar, just like these. I've been to many an Italian restaurant and lots of pizzerias here in town, and I can say that these are closest to the ones my grandmother used to make. The texture is so feathery light and airy that they practically float away. The flavor is that of a master chef's yeasty dough. We absolutely love these and insist you try them. I know this review has been a gush fest, dish after dish that I've gone on about how wonderful it is. Well, what can I say? We had a fantastic meal and overall, just a highly satisfying experience. It's not often we can say there wasn't a single dish we had that we wouldn't gladly and gleefully devour again. You never know what to expect at any restaurant, but particularly a new place. Well, no worries at Lucky Noodle. Within just a few months, they have all the polish and luster of a restaurant that's been around for years and years and has reached its prime. Each dish was well conceived and executed with unique spice combinations, different from anything I've tasted before, making this a truly unique flavor experience. Throw in helpful and friendly staff and you have a place destined for great things. Usually after reviewing a place, we don't have the chance to get back there for quite some time. I can tell you unequivocally, we'll be back to Lucky Noodle very soon. Do yourself a favor and check it out. Maybe we'll see you there and make sure to tell them Let's Eat Vegas sent you. Chef Rick was gracious enough to offer a free sour plum juice with any dine-in Let's Eat Vegas viewer. But just tell them Let's Eat Vegas sent you to qualify. I know we're all guilty of watching videos on YouTube and not subscribing. 
As a reminder, it's free to subscribe and it really helps us bring you more videos. So please like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit the notifications bell. It means a lot to us. Until we eat again, bon appetit.